The year was 1835. The famous minutes of Macaulay announced English education in India. At the same time, the Parliament of Scotland decided to send missionaries to India in order to introduce Western education. Reverend James Laurie and Reverend Matthew Bowie, two chaplains, sailed to India with a burden to start a school as a part of their missionary work. Thus, the credit of having brought Western education to this benighted presidency of Madras goes to the Church of Scotland. These two chaplains of St. Andrew's Kirk started a school at Randall's Road in Egmore. The school was called St. Andrew's School. In reply to the appeal of the chaplains, Reverend John Anderson was appointed as the missionary of the Church of Scotland in India. Reverend Anderson set sail to India in the ship Scotia on the 13th August and reached Calcutta. After a few weeks' stay in Calcutta, he reached Madras on 17th February 1837. He was brought to the St. Andrew's Church on a palanquin. St. Andrew's School was handed over to Anderson. He moved the school to a two-story rented house in Armenian Street in Blacktown, as Georgetown was then called. Reverend Anderson published the objects of the institution in the local newspapers, which was widely appreciated by the public. Reverend Anderson opened the school to all, irrespective of their religion or caste. He faced many tribulations because of this, yet he stuck to his ideals. The school had 180 students in the year 1837. Reverend Anderson created an instructional staff comprising monitors who were senior pupils and were instructed by him during the weekends. These monitors in turn taught the lower classes during regular day sessions. Reverend Anderson's innovative educational strategies and his personal influence kept the school flag flying aloft. Anderson opened branch schools at Triplicane, Chengalpet, Kanjiburam, Tiruvallur and Nellur. In 1846, the financial board bought the sailor's home in Esplanade. The school moved into this renovated building on December 15, 1846. It kindled a spirit within us that raised us up on our bed and pointed as if with finger to India as the field of our future labors, should it please God to spare our lives and to open up the way. Reverend Anderson's health began to fail and he passed away on 25th March 1855. His body was laid to rest in the old London Mission Cemetery at Pursawakam. His death was an irreparable loss to the institution. After the passing away of Anderson, the school almost lost its leadership upon the educational scene. It was in the midst of such adverse circumstances that the young Reverend William Miller arrived in Madras on December 9, 1862. Already, many had proposed the closure of the school, but Reverend Miller would not let it die. He started taking more interest in the educational work of the school, with the result that it began to make steady progress. The vast program outlined by Anderson was to be channelized into ordered discipline of university studies, and he gave the whole of his life talents and fortune towards the cause. Three out of six students who applied for the matriculation examination qualified from the school. In 1867, a class was opened to prepare students for the BA examination. The school had become a college of the Madras University. The school was renamed Madras Christian College from 1st January 1877. Miller's health deteriorated. He left Madras on 14th March 1907. In his last message, he advised the students, Be faithful to your own values you have learned. He passed away peacefully on 15th July 1923 in Edinburgh. A statue of Miller was erected in front of the college at Paris Corner 
in 1901, but was removed to the MCC school premises at Chepet in 1985. Dr. Kuruvilla Jacob became the headmaster in the year 1931. The appointment of the young Indian headmaster was considered as one of the first steps in preserving the separate identity of the school. In 1937, the college moved to Tandrum. The years of the war from 1939 to 1945 brought many difficulties to the school and the loss of the playing fields at Spring Haven Road. It became clear that for modern educational needs, the ancient site must be abandoned. An excellent new ground was found available near Chetpet Station and the site was purchased. The construction of the building was commenced in the closing months of the year 1949. The architects planned and drew, but the way it turned out was entirely due to Kuruvilla Jacob's ideas. The classrooms were built to hold 40 children and every bit of space was measured and planned accurately. The great elaborately carved staircase which now leads to the art room was brought from Scotland. The elegant new buildings were declared open on October 21st, 1950 by His Excellency the Governor, the Maharaja of Bhavnagar. The school reached the peak of excellence in both curricular and extracurricular activities. One of the first things Kuruvilla introduced to the new school was games and it soon became part of the curriculum. The 50s was a period of progress, of experimentation and innovation in every field of education for the Madras Christian College High School. To Kuruvilla, reading was an instrument of knowledge and the library of the Madras Christian College High School with a wide range of books was the first to have a qualified librarian on its staff. The emphasis on the importance of co-curricular activities, sports and the quality of education given raised the reputation of the school even more. Good pupils and keen teachers bestowed on it a steadily growing reputation that it was the best school in the city. After Mr. Kurivila Jacob, the Madras Christian College School continued its journey under the guidance of efficient headmasters, Mr. D.S. Matthias, Mr. E.D. Savrirayan, Dr. Clement J. Felix, Dr. Jefferson Christopher. Descended from a line of such illustrious predecessors, Mr. G.J. Manohar became the headmaster and correspondent in 2006. He is a competent, dynamic, energetic person with a great vision for the school. Standing high on the shoulders of the pioneers who built the institution, Madras Christian College High Secondary School has reached its 175 years of dedicated and successful existence. This remarkable milestone is achieved only by the sheer grace of God. Having the rich heritage and tradition behind the history, MCC school is quietly molding itself to suit the training trends of education. The school believes that the early years of a child are important to shape the character and the desire to learn. Keeping this in mind, a nursery and primary school was started in the same campus in 2008. An important turning point in the history of MCC high secondary school is the opening of its portals to the girls and it is understood that women also constitute the pillars of our country. 
The school has always accorded great importance to the holistic development of its ward, and sports play an important role in the overall development. With a team of dedicated teachers, supportive management, and encouraging parents, the school has adopted innovative teaching methodologies to cater to their inquisitive young minds. Anderson's vision to provide education without discrimination is on our banner, and we can proudly say that the imposing infrastructure, state-of-art technology have been extended to all. The school has reaped its success in all its endeavors, but not wanting to rest on the laurels, we continue to inspire and serve mankind for everlasting and will always shine like a jewel in a crown. This great institution, which has produced many eminent personalities from its portals for 175 years, will continue its service in pursuit of excellence in education. Mm -hmm.